Hey everybody, my name is Kelton and welcome to another StuCant expert session. Today our guest speaker is Sam Hirabad. Sam works as an inbound strategist for agencies at HubSpot. He has been in the digital marketing and web analytics industry for seven plus years and has had the privilege of working with thousands of different organizations within the private and public sector. Most of Sam's experience includes coaching agencies on how to succeed and finding, selling, and executing the right web analytics and digital marketing solutions for his clients. Sam speaks multiple languages, including Swedish, English, Farsi, and Spanish. And if you don't catch him at work, you can find Sam drawing or also binge watching his favorite TV series. We're super excited to have you on today, Sam, so take it away. Thanks for the introduction, happy to be here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about SMART goals. So as you heard, my name is Sam Hirbad and I'm a principal channel consultant here at HubSpot. The agenda of today's session will look something like this. I'm gonna talk about what you need to have in place before starting working with SMART goals, how to get started with SMART goals, common mistakes people make when working with SMART goals, and how you can reach goals by using SMART goals. Cool, so let's dive in. So first and foremost, name Sam Airbud once again. I have a Master of Science, it's Business Administration and Economics. I've coached over 1,000 organizations so far uh, worldwide, so gotten a lot of insights when it comes to them working with SMART goals. And uh, I've also learned a lot from agencies who do not actually work with SMART goals. So uh, I'm gonna share some common mistakes they've made uh, why it's not that great to actually not set up SMART goals. And yeah, I've been in the industry for around seven years, closing in on eight right now. And if you have any questions regarding the session, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, ask away questions, I'm happy to help. So with that said, let's just dive into things. So before starting, what do you actually need to have in place? Well, one thing I usually tell agencies is that they need to base every decision they take upon data. So I know a lot of you have probably heard about data-driven decision-making, and that's really what this is all about. By being smart, you need also to look at the data you have available. So what do I mean by data? Well, a lot of organizations are actually sitting on tools such as Google Analytics, HubSpot, Facebook, you name it. And, you know, all of these tools actually capture a lot of data. So no, why not just have a look at the data and see what you're sitting upon uh, when taking the next steps or making any decisions regarding your future or where you need to optimize or where you need to optimize your client, for example. So a common mistake people make when thinking about data-driven decisions is that it's difficult to take data-driven decisions because it's, there is a lot of data and I agree. There's a lot of data you have available. Sometimes you can feel overwhelmed. That's usually one of the things a lot of organizations, agencies, you name it, mention. They have so much data, they don't really know where to focus. That's where you can be thinking in another way. You could think it really doesn't have to be that difficult because as long as you focus on the essentials, then you're good to go, at least when it comes to the beginning stages of working on an online campaign, offline campaign, an event, you name it. It doesn't really have to be that difficult. All you need to focus on, uh, well, this is my recommendation, would be that you focus on things such as visitors, leads, and customers. That's more than enough to get you started when evaluating, for example, online efforts. Uh, with visitors, I of course mean things such as website traffic. Uh, with leads, I mean how many people did actually sign up to an event uh, through a form, for example. And with customers, I mean people who actually pay for your product or service. So to the left, you can actually see a flywheel. So this is the inbound take. Uh, as I mentioned, I work at HubSpot, so we work a lot with inbound marketing. So marketing, sales, and services go hand in hand. So here, within marketing, you would try to capture leads and visitors, and then you would, with the help of sales and service, create them to happy customers. So that's why customer is in the middle. Now, when you have the essentials in place, you also want to map things out. So I would, for example, in this case, have a look at the data that your client or yourself are sitting on. So in this case, we can see that the amount of visitors per month would be around 30,000. You have the amount of leads 
uh, being 200 per month. And then you have the amount of customers being two per month. So if we do a quick calculation, we can see that the visitor to lead conversion rate is around 0.67%. Now the lead to customer conversion rate is around 1%. So if we want to think about an area where we could focus or improve upon, it would probably be the visitor to lead conversion rate. 0.67%, in this case, we can say it's quite low. So we want to improve upon that. There's no way for us to know that we would actually need to improve when it comes to the visitor to lead conversion rate unless we had actually taken a look upon data. Usually what happens when you're working with organizations is that they would say that, oh, we need to improve our customer conversion rates, but they don't really know what the customer conversion rate is because they're not having they don't really look at your data. Same thing goes for the lead conversion rate. You need leads in order to get customers. So in this case, it would make more sense to really focus on the lead conversion rate. So for example, in this case, if we are an agency offering services to clients and we wanna focus on lead conversions, then we wanna focus on the top part. So these are some examples of how you can capture more leads. So you need to focus on SEO, blogging, all of that stuff to generate quality traffic. And then you wanna convert them through landing pages, for example. Now to close and light stages, they include services where you actually turn these leads into customers. But as we mentioned, we really wanna focus on capturing more qualitative leads right now. So that is why we will focus on attract and convert stage services. Um, so this is really a way you could prioritize where you're going to put focus when it comes to you being a company, uh, for example. Otherwise, you would focus on everything and you would see that the results would uh, move, you know, not at the speed you want them to move because you can't really focus on everything at once. You want to focus on one thing at a time to get the most out of it. Now that we have the essentials in place, it's also important to focus about or it's also important to think about the next steps. So in this case, what do I mean by next steps? Well, for example, now that you know how many visitors, leads, and customers you have, you also want to focus on customer satisfaction. So in this case, examples would be, for example, NPS, ticketing, support, really measuring how happy customers are if they're having a seamless experience with you as an agency or organization. Because if they don't, that means that you're generating negative word of mouth. So that means you're gonna get less customers because people are talking poorly about you. So here's an example of that. Less friction equals higher customer satisfaction. And this is really the world we're moving towards uh, where word of mouth is playing a more and more important role. And that is why in order for you to generate positive word of mouth, you also need to be smart about the decisions you make moving forward. So especially when it comes to your goals, you wanna make sure that they're smart. This is probably one of my favorite gifts and that is why I'm using it because you wanna make sure <laughs> that you set realistic expectations when it comes to your clients, for example. Let's say that you're an organization and you're selling a bunch of products. Now, let's say you're an agency Another example, selling services. No matter which industry you're in, it's important that you have set realistic expectations. So if we take the agency case, for example, where you're an agency selling services to your clients, the client might have expected you to generate 200 new customers within one month, whereas you had expected that you would generate 20 customers in that given month. Now, those are unrealistic or misaligned expectations, right? And that's probably because you didn't really uh, focus on the data you had at hand uh, and you didn't really share that kind of data with the client either. So the expectations were misaligned because there was no transparency and your client doesn't really know what to expect from you anymore. So by being smart and by really evaluating the data your client is sitting on, both of you are on the same page when it comes to moving forward you know what goals you wanna reach and you know how to reach them as well and the client is well aware of how as well. So smart goals help keep you and your clients happy. So let's dive into how, to, how you actually get started with smart goals. So SMART is an acronym. It stands for being specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. 
So some examples when it comes to being specific would be, for example, focusing on visits, leads, or customers. Measurable would be providing a number. Attainable would be understanding the benchmarks. Relevant would be that you relate back to an overall end goal. And timely, you need to include a time frame. So let's focus on a smarter goal setting from now on, that you know how you can actually become smart. With a smarter goal setting, you can actually take better decisions. You know why you can focus on moving forward, you know which medium drives the most value. So with medium, for example, say that we're having a website open and we want to track is social media driving the most traffic and leads or is it you know, paid campaigns? By analyzing the data you're sitting upon, you know which medium is performing better and you know which goal you should set for each and every medium. You wouldn't know that if you didn't focus on the data you have at hand. You can also find room for improvement. So say that you set up SMART goals and you realize that you didn't really hit them. Well, now you can analyze why you didn't hit them and you can dive deeper into what you need to do moving forward in order to actually hit these kind of goals. So I'm going to give you some example of SMART goals, one being for an online campaign. Let's say that you're an organization, you're running campaigns on Facebook, you name it, and in this case, we want to set up some goals, uh, and we want to make sure that these goals are SMART. So SMART, remember, stood for specific. So in this case, we're being specific by really getting down to what we want from this campaign. So in this case, we want to increase the number of online leads by promoting it through influencers, social, and blog. We want it to be measurable as well. So in this case, we want a 15% increase in online leads. We also want it to be attainable. So we need to look at previous data that we had, and we noticed that we previously generated an 8% increase in leads when we only promoted our campaign through social. We also want to make sure that it's actually relevant for our business. So in this case, it is relevant because generating more leads would mean more sales opportunities, which in the end would mean more clients for us. So that is good and it's relevant. So, so far we've covered the S-M-A-R. Now we only have the timely part. So we wanna make sure that our goal is time bound. In this case, we're gonna run the campaign for a month, October 15th till November 15th. So the SMART goal, if we just summarize what we just mentioned, would be that by November 16th, the day after the online campaign, we will see a 15% increase in leads by promoting it through influencers, social, and blog. This is an example of a SMART goal. It doesn't really have to be more complicated than this. What's important is that you actually track the progress. And what's also important is that you think of SMART goals not only being something for online uh, things, but you can actually have it for offline events, for example, as well. So you don't only think online, you can think about offline as well. So in this case, we're actually gonna run an event and we wanna increase the number of signups for our event by promoting it through social, email, and blog. We wanna make sure that it's measurable once again. So in this case, we want 20% increase in signups for the event and we wanna make sure that it's attainable. So our last event had 13% increase in signups, uh, but that time we only promoted it through our blog. So this time we're gonna to try to add social and email as well. We also want to make sure, once again, that it's relevant. So our events do generate more leads, which means, once again, more sales opportunities for us as a business, which is important for us. So yes, it is relevant. And once again, it's time bound. So by November 11th, that's the day of the event, we want to make sure that everything is up and running and we're generating more signups. So all in all, by November 11th, the day of our event, we will see a 20% increase in signups by promoting it through social, email, and our blog. This is a simple example of SMART goals. And remember, this is quite easy to do. But in fact, a lot of agencies, a lot of organizations are still not using SMART goals. They just say they want an increase uh, in signups, for example. They don't mention by how much, by when. Is it attainable? What are you basing this upon? These are things you need to constantly question yourself in order to get the best results.
Another mistake a lot of people are making when it comes to setting SMART goals is that you're not really being proactive once you set them. It's not enough that you've set up SMART goals, but you actually have to identify the progress. And you also have to talk about accountability when setting up the SMART goals as well. Say that you're running an advertising and you're working in the ad advertising industry and you're not really hitting goals. In this case, is it because you were solely responsible for this campaign that you were supposed to run or was the client supposed to do something? An example would be that the client is responsible for actually publishing the content that you're producing. If the client never published any of the content that you produced, then you know, you're not gonna see any results. And it would be a shame for you to discover this by the end of campaign, instead of, you know, a couple of days in or a couple of weeks in when you can actually do something about it. So that's why being proactive is super important. So you can easily identify roadblocks and overcome them during and after you've set up the goals. Now, the number one question I usually get when it comes to SMART goals would be, what if I don't hit my SMART goals? Am I doomed? Will I fail forever? What's gonna happen? Will, will the world end or not? Simple answer would be no. I believe everyone makes mistakes and you're actually gonna learn a lot from them. But just by staying proactive, as I mentioned before, this will actually help you avoid the worst case scenarios. So remember the example of an agency or an advertising bureau creating content, but then the content not being published. That's an actual case. A client spent around $20,000 on a simple campaign, which actually never got published. And then it was irrelevant once it discovered that it never got published. So that's why staying proactive is super important. So please avoid realizing that you didn't hit the SMART goals after the campaign is over. It's quite easy to do. All you need to do is study results as they're happening. So some examples or tips on how you can actually stay proactive would be by analyzing your data before, during, and after a campaign, solving potential roadblocks and pave the way forward. So for example, if you discovered that the client in this case is not publishing, you would have to dig into why are they not publishing this? What can we do in order to publish it? Uh, and also explain what will happen, obviously, if you're not publishing the content. You also wanna make sure that you keep your client in the loop. Remember the world is on fire picture that I showed you before? That usually happens at the end of the campaign if the client was not involved in the whole campaign making or whatever you're delivering to them. So please make sure that you have weekly meetings or bi-weekly or at least monthly meetings with a client where you're explaining, this is where we are right now, this is how we're tracking towards the goals we set, this is why we're hitting them, and this is why we're not hitting them. Uh, you could also talk about potential roadblocks, identify them, bounce it off with a client, tell them what you're doing to improve their results moving forward. This will strengthen the connection you have with a client, and hopefully they want to stay with you as a client as well. So what if, what if things actually don't go that well? Well, things you need to review when you notice that you're not actually hitting your goals are chances of optimization. Where can you optimize the most and reap the most benefit by doing it when it comes to your campaign, for example? Who is actually responsible? Once again, the example, who's gonna publish, who's gonna do this and that, that's super important to have in place before you actually start creating campaigns or delivering any type of service you have. You also need to realign expectations. So how will you actually move forward now that you've realized that you're not actually hitting the goals? Was it because you didn't really have that much data uh, that you base upon, uh, that you base the smart goals upon, or was it because of something else? A major red flag that I want you to trigger in your head whenever somebody mentions goals in the future would be to ask yourself, is this goal that the person or you know organization, agency, you name it, are mentioning, yes or no? So for example, this is a live example of some goals some organizations put up that I worked with. The goal was to increase the size of the team and how would they do so? Well, by increasing capacity with hire. They also wanted to generate leads for the organization, let's call it organization X in this case, and they wanted to do so by growing uh, a new higher quality leads. Is this smart? 
Not really. Could it be smarter? Yes, definitely. How can it be smarter? Well, you can always ask yourself the questions or just look at what SMART actually stands for. Uh, but this is a start, at least. I'm not saying it's super bad. I'm just saying it could be smarter. And by being smarter, you could actually set better goals. You could uh, do even better as a company or organization. So always ask yourself if things are smart or not whenever you hear somebody talk about goals. Success factors that I've identified after working with organizations. Uh, if I would have to talk about the, the top ones, it would probably be basing your decisions upon data. Once again, I can't stress this enough. A lot of agencies, organizations are uh, sitting upon tons and tons of data, but they're not really using it. You got to stay proactive as well. If you're not staying proactive, you will probably end up losing this client of yours. And that's never a good scenario. So please make sure that you identify everything you can in the future, future roadblocks, all of those things. Please make sure that you're staying proactive. And please, please, please make sure that you're keeping your client in the loop. If you have full transparency, you're strengthening your bond with the client and they want to stay with you as a customer, you're going to generate more business because of how transparent you are. Uh, the client wants to talk well about you, give you super good reviews, and you're going to get more customers that way through word of mouth, for example. So that's always good for you. Common mistake people make is probably that you're afraid of setting goals because once you've set up goals, you know, they can be measured. You might notice that you're not actually hitting the goals and you really shouldn't be afraid of that because sometimes it's actually good for you not to, you know, hit your goals. Well, not good, good, but at least you're going to learn a lot from it and you can realign expectations. You can dig into why you're not hitting them. But if you're not analyzing, you know, or not setting goals, you will never really reach your full potential. And why would clients want to stay with someone who doesn't really go all in when it comes to, you know, creating campaigns for them or delivering services at all? So questions you can actually ask yourself now that you know what's being smart is or setting smart goals would be, you know, ask your client if their overall goal can be defined. What is it? Ask them, how can you track your progress? How many hours can you dedicate to reach this goal? What is the biggest challenge preventing you from reaching this goal? And when would you like to reach this goal? You'll notice that each and every question corresponds to S-M-A-R-T. So these are smart questions you could ask your client whenever you want to deliver some type of service. And by asking them, you can make sure that you're on track, you're identifying future roadblocks, and you're doing the most you can whenever you're delivering services. But more importantly, you can actually be smart when it comes to reaching your own goals in life in general. So I would like to end this by having you asking yourself, what is your overall goal in life? How can you actually track your progress? How many hours can you dedicate to reaching this goal of yours? What is the biggest challenge preventing you from reaching this goal? And when would you like to reach it? Hopefully, by the end of the session, which we've reached now, you know more about being smart and you can take smarter decisions moving along. Hopefully, this is going to help you, you know, optimize campaigns moving forward, have happier clients, and maybe, who knows, have a better life for yourself. So I would like to thank you for having me. And once again, if you have any questions regarding smart goals, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to help.